focus is not who we were, but who we are in Christ. And we're forever giving God praise and honor and thanksgiving to what? You know, my wife and I, we was riding down the road this morning to the church and God talks to me in different ways, and I'm always listening to various conversation because God used to give me scriptures and relationship, and I'm amazed the way the Lord speaks to my heart. But as we were coming to church this morning, and the message that God gave me for the day was always abounded with thanksgiving, and I gave you some scriptures, and we probably have a few testimonies after I get through, probably after, all depends on how long I preach. <laughs> but I want you to write this down. Because this is us in the days to come. Next Sunday, December the 4th, all the church is coming together because I have a special word, I believe, from God for this church, for your family, for your business, for your future, and for your life. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5, when you come to the house of God, come with an ear to hear because God will speak to you concerning your situation. Every word may not be directly for you, but indirectly it is. And when the word of God is preached, it would either warn you of what's coming or what you are doing, it would inform you and even challenge you. If the word of God don't challenge you, if the word is not challenging you, you need to find another place. Because you're not going to go far if you don't have somebody behind you pushing you, encouraging you, and challenging you, and telling you don't do that anymore. Now, this is the word of the Lord came to me this morning. This, this morning, this is hot off the press, and it's about a threefold card. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4, 12, a threefold card is hard to be broken. Threefold. But do you not realize, this is why I know you're destined for greatness if I can get you just to line up. When you line up with God, there's a threefold card working. Number one, we learned last week, Jesus, as an intercessor, Hebrews 7, 25, he lived to make intercession for the church that the perfect will of God would be carried out. We know that. He's at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. As you and then again, the Holy Spirit, He's in the earth today, working in you, Romans 7, Romans 8, 26. For when we know not how to pray, the Holy Spirit himself prays the perfect will of God. So you have Jesus praying for your success. You have the Holy Spirit praying for your success. And it comes down to you. Paul told us in Ephesians 14, 14, he said, when I pray, it is my spirit praying. Then he tells us in Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. This is why I put so much emphasis on praying in tongues. Amen. Paul said, I pray in tongues. I mean, 1 Corinthians 14, 18, he said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. Because when you're praying in tongues, what happened? There's a threefold cord working together. Jesus at the right hand of the Father, the Holy Spirit in the earth today, and then you are lining up. And when you line up, nobody can stop what God's going to do. That's why you have to, I do a lot of praying in tongues because I learned it from the Apostle Paul. He prays a lot in tongues. We do a lot of praying in tongues here. I believe that is one message Satan fights more in the Bible than in the message in the Bible. The prayer language of the Spirit of speaking in tongues. That's a side language, but I, that could take you through hell and back. Because God knows what's coming before it gets to you. If he could just get us a line up. And I'm going to talk more about that later on as we come together. But today I want to talk to you about always abounding with thanksgiving. Tell your neighbor, the, the message today is about you. This is what George Washington, our first president, he said this October the 3rd, 1789. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. Now, therefore, I do appoint Thursday, the 26th day of November, 1789, that we may all unite to render unto him, God, our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection. And he made it a day of public thanking God, giving thanks and praise unto God for his goodness. Now, that's to the world, but to you and I, that's a lifestyle for us. 
we shall abound with thanksgiving when we think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for us. My soul shout hallelujah. And I praise God for saving me. We don't wait for Thanksgiving to exercise what God said in his word. To you and I, it is a lifestyle because Thanksgiving was and is a day of what? Originally set aside for the nations of the world to give thanks, but to the church, it's a lifestyle. Thanksgiving is an attitude of gratefulness towards God and to one another. And when we give thanks to God for the blessing he has provided for us, what happened? They will keep coming and they will eventually overtake you. There's something about God. He always wants us to return and give thanks. He healed 10 lepers and only one returned to say thanks. And Jesus said, was there not 10? The one that came and gave thanks were made whole. The other nine was healed. There's a difference between being healed and being made whole. You may have some healed church crooks, but they're not whole. Did you return to give thanks to God for his goodness? Did you stop and give thanks to God for the many wonderful things? Don't be like the world, celebrate Thanksgiving one day, but no, be like Jesus, be like God. Celebrate Thanksgiving every day, forever giving things. See, because Thanksgiving is a time of reflection and being thankful for all that God has given us. God should be praised always for his goodness. And we have all a lot to be thankful for. Think about where he has brought us from. I have to admit God's been good to me. Tell your neighbor, when I look back over my life and I realize what I was before I got saved, and I see what the Lord has done, and I hate that I'm giving thankful to God for the best is yet to come. Because the Bible says old things have passed away, now all things have become new. As you continue to walk and give and thanks and praises to God, you'll be amazed at what's going to happen in your life in the days to come. Also, Thanksgiving is the expression of a grateful heart, a time to rejoice. It should force the believer to look outside of himself. See, before Christ, I was selfish. Everything was about me. But after Christ, I died to self, and I'm forever giving thanks to God because you have to admit, God has increased joy and I. He has increased my family, this church, more and more every day. I repeat, more and more every day. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not grateful enough. So that might be holding up some of your blessings because you didn't stop to return to give thanks unto God. You know, a lot of times we take life for general, people for general. But we're not realizing that God has been good to us. And we all have to recognize it. Look at your neighbor and say, when I knew you before you got saved. And say, when I look at you now, God's been good to you, boy. You look better, you smell better, you walk better, you smell better. Tell them, say, you look better, you smell better, you walk better. You even smell better. There's a different smell on you. Guess what, guys? I don't want to embarrass you, so I tell you openly. God delivered you from that stink. Yeah, God delivered you. You don't have that stinky smell no longer. You ever been around sinners? They don't know it, but they stink. Because seeing that spirit stinks. A lot of people in the world don't know it because they're used to that odor. Yeah, well, sin will stink, man. You get around her. But see, when you get used to living in an environment, you just think, guess what? Everybody smells like that. Well, you ought to thank God for delivering you from that stinky smell. Look at your neighbors. I'm glad he delivered you. Let us not be thankful one day a year, but celebrate the greatness of God with thanksgiving every day, every moment, every hour. Isn't God good? Notice that bullet there. The power in keeping your heart filled with thanksgiving is being conscious of God's blessings every day. Forever grateful. 
I'm thankful for what he has done. Oh, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. He delivered us from the powers of darkness. And he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He made me a better father, better husband, trying to be a better pastor every day. I let you grade me, and if I don't like your grades, I just grade myself. I'm going to give myself an A. Because I know I do everything I can to make this house a better house. I do everything I can to pray that you'll be a better man, a better woman. I fast and I pray and I see God's face to bring your family to another level, to take my family to another level, to take my life. And if you don't appreciate the fast and the sacrifice I do, I believe God will in the way. But you know, reason I say that, so often, so many times, we take one another for granted. I want to speak to the children. You, you know, the devil, your parents is not the best of parents, but you got to realize they fasted, they sweat, they worked to get you from a zero to where you are today. Don't let one bad situation control your destiny. Because when you were a child, they bust their tail to get you to where you are. I could say more, but I'll let you decide what I want to say. But a lot of times, we want to hold on to what someone did wrong, and there's never no gratitude. The Bible says we are to focus on that which is good, lovely, honest, just, pure, and of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. A lot of marriages are going down the street, down the sink because we don't see the good in one another. But if we'll focus on that which is good, we have something to be grateful for. No one is perfect. The best of us have missed it at one time or another, but you will never have a pleasant life always looking back over your life on how bad it was. Wives, be grateful for, to your husband. Praise him for what he does. The best way to change a man is praise him and honor him. And the Bible tells us that wives, honor your husband, both small and great. But it shouldn't stop there. Husbands should honor the wives as the weaker vessel and always giving praise and giving honor to that wife, thankful to that wife of what part she play in our lives. I believe a lot, reason a lot of people are single, they haven't learned how to be a wife. Uh oh Well, they're quiet on me now. Because the Bible says he or she that finds a wife finds a what? I believe a lot of young ladies are single today because they haven't learned how to be a wife. I had a young lady came to me yesterday, and she was so excited about a possible promotion, and she said, this guy, single, and the people are single, and I said something to her. Don't try to figure out who it was because you don't know. <laughs> but this is what I told her, and I speak this to all my single daughters in this church. Let your godliness win him, not your beauty. Because if you, if you win him, your beauty ain't going to last for five, ten years the most. But godliness will be with you, what, all of your life. Here's my two grandsons. Come here, Justin and Jared. Come here. You know, I love my grandkids. I got nine of them. I got two of them with me here this morning. Justin, you get on my right hand. Don't they look good? Look at them. Don't they look good? Yeah. Look, stretch it. I love my grandkids. I speak to them all the time. I speak to them all the time. Every time I get around them, and you should do the same thing. This, this morning in my office, I said, you boys know you're destined for greatness, don't you? They looked at me and said, yeah, Papa. I said, it's in you. I said, it's in you. Greatness is in your kids. But you have to awaken it by how you speak to them. I repeat, you got to speak to your grandkids and tell them there's greatness in them. Greatness is in these boys. These boys are destined for greatness. All of my grandkids are destined for greatness. All of your kids are destined for greatness. Grab them by the hand and speak to them. Speak life into your children. 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 Into your children. I told him, I said, you look good this morning. You represent Papa. 
They look good. You have to admit they do look good. Look at them. Check them out. These are my grandkids. I want you to do the same thing to your children, to your grandchildren. Speak life to them. Speak life to your children. I said, 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 speak life to your children. Especially if they're black. It needs some encouragement. These kids need some encouragement. Look at them. You look good, boy. Walk across. Let them see. Walk across there. Take them out. Take them out. Check them out. Walk across there, Justin. Both of those boys in college. Learning. They're learning. I keep them in school. I told them don't even think about coming out of school until you get your master's degree. I was with my grandson, little Rick. He and I had dinner the other day. I took him out. Me, Ma was tired. She didn't want to cook. Rick could stand with us. He's going to school. So I took him out to dinner. My favorite places were K and W. See, I don't care what you like. I like me some K&W. Now, you may want to go to get your steak. Just let me go to some K&W. Get me some pinto beans. I like them. A little piece of meat. I don't really have to have the meat. Just give me some vegetables. That's all I need, Rod. Just some vegetables. I like some K&W. It may be the cheapest place in the world, but it feeds me good. Now, my wife don't like it. She don't like it. But every now and then, she goes out of grace. <laughs> well, let me get off of that. Before I get in trouble. My point is, I took little Rick to dinner. He and I were sitting there, and I wanted to get inside of his head. I was encouraged, and then I, wanted to, I started asking him some questions about his future. Well, said, yeah, I want to know what was in his heart. What he had in his heart. I was so blessed. One thing he said to me that blessed me. And he said, when I get, I said, he's, he's 26 now. He's still in college. He said, I'm not coming out of college, Papa, until I get my doctorate. He's focused. Something else he said to me. He said, when I do get married, he said, she got to be a Christian. Yeah. And let me know, he's got his head screwed on. Amen. Justin told me the same thing. Amen. Don't let your kids just drift away from you. Don't let your grandkids drift away from you. Don't you drift away from your parents because of some bad issue, a bad situation. This is a time to be grateful. It's a time to be thankful. It's a time to express your gratitude to one another. And by all means, learn to, be, say, learn to say thanks. Learn to say thanks. You can't say it too much. The wife can't say it too much to the husband. The husband can't say it too much to the wife. Lady Joyce, every time she prepared my meals, and she's a good cook. She is a good cook. You can look at me and tell that. But I always say this. Thank you, sweetheart, for preparing my supper. I prepared my meal. I don't take it for granted. That's a wife's duty. It is. But it's also my duty to say thanks. Let's learn the value of thanksgiving on a daily basis. Let's not take one another for granted and assume that they know that you're grateful. There's something about it, when you say it, it has more substance to it. You can think about it, there's no substance. But when you say it, well, you know I appreciate you. No, say it. 
Don't assume they know that you appreciate them. Say it. I repeat, say it. I repeat, say it. I repeat, say it. I thank you for it. They know I know that I'm grateful. No, don't nobody know your mind. I'm not a mind reader. Tell everybody. Just say it. There should always be a response to every act of kindness. Thank you. Thank you. Whether it's your wife, whether it's your husband, whether it's your prince, your pastor, the president, or whoever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And see, if you grew up in a home where that was not exercised, you, your lifestyle will be built around that people doing great things for you, but you never return to give things. Being conscious of God's blessings on a daily basis. And notice that next bullet. Do not get caught up in things you possess and lose sight of God, your source. There's the danger of being an American. You can have a good job. It provides for you. You got two suits, two dollars, and two cars, and you get relaxed in your possessions. Now, you don't go to church any longer. And that's one of the problems I'm having with people today. Church is almost out of their lifestyle. No, no, no. Don't never allow yourself to be so blessed that you forgot who made it possible for you to get that education. That you forgot who made it possible for you to get your degrees, who made it possible for you to have that good job, who made it possible for you to achieve the many wonderful things. Because the Bible says in Deuteronomy 8.18, you shall remember it's the Lord thy God that gives you power or the ability to make what? Have wealth. We didn't get to where we are on our own. We got to where we are because of our God. And that next bullet, if you remain thankful, you're able to offer the sacrifices of praise to God continually. That's the secret to a better life. Praise and giving thanks to God inspires and improves your faith in God. Your trust and your confidence. I don't know there's something about that one word that it takes every relationship to another level. Just to say thanks. It don't cost anything just to say thanks. I believe it'll change every situation, change every relationship if we just stop and return and give thanks. That's my role to play in this life. Thanks. That's your role to play in this life. Thanks. Whether it's your companion, whether it's your parent, don't focus on the negative. Focus on the good and say thanks. Because the devil will focus on the negative and destroy. But God will focus on the good and build. Are you a corporate tricks too? Who will you give place to? Are you out there? Notice what David stated there in Psalm 69, verse number 30. But I will praise the name of God with the song. Notice he said, he said, I will magnify God with thanksgiving. David was a man after God's own heart. Do you not know what the word magnify means? It means to extend, to boldly build up. And here's David saying, um, this is why the Bible said David was a man after God's own heart. David said, I will magnify God with thanksgiving. When's the last time you stopped and gave thanks to God? You cannot begin to praise God or someone continually and retain a naked attitude towards them. No way. You can continually give thanks and praise to someone and maintain a naked attitude. We'll have a healthy family, a healthy life if every husband is stopped and give thanks to his wife for all that she does in that relationship. If the wife will stop and give thanks to the husband for all that he does in the relationship. And if all of us will stop and give thanks to one another for all the role that we play in building this church and building one another's lives. 
I believe the atmosphere would be great and there would be a manifestations of the move of God. The Bible says in Psalms 92 verse 1, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and saying praises unto his name, O Most High. And then notice what he said in Psalms 107 verse 1, O give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For, <coughs> excuse me, his mercy endures forever. He said give thanks unto the Lord. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Sing praises unto his name, for he is good. And you have to admit that God is good. Amen. And he's been a merciful God with us, because you're like me, you missed it over the years, but God's mercy was there. He forgave us for the many wonderful, many times we missed the mark, but his mercy was there. And I like this next verse. It's, oh, that men would praise the Lord. What for? For his goodness and for his wonderful works to watch the children of men. Don't be like the nine lepers that never did return to give thanks, but be like the one that stopped and went back and said, thank you, God. Daily giving thanks to God. Daily giving thanks to God. Uh, you know what? I taught this on Wednesday night. Wednesday Bible study, did I bring it, came before my spirit again. You know the best way to give thanks to God is by thanking one another. Because Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40, as much as you've done unto the least of these little ones, you've done it unto me. When I practice on you of giving thanks to you and praising you for your goodness or for God's goodness, what I'm happy, I'm ministering to the Lord. We minister to God by ministering to one another. When Paul was attacking the church, and he didn't know it, but he was attacking Jesus. And but God, Jesus met him on the road to Damascus, and he said, why kick against the prick? Paul didn't know about attacking the Christian. He was attacking Jesus. So if Paul was attacking Jesus by attacking the Christian, we can attack Jesus with thanks by giving thanks to one another. I want to be like him. Tell your neighbor, I want to be just like him. Do you not know the key to the treasure chest of heaven is found in your praise and thanksgiving to God? Because giving thanks inspires your faith. It inspires your hope. And your faith will increase in one another as you practice giving thanks. Why is it? Next, verse 9. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. I long to be like him. I long to please him. And I'm always hungry and thirst for righteousness. So therefore, I don't have to fast three days to do what's right. All I need to do is read the scripture and know that God is not a man that is a lie. If he said it, he'll do it. So I'm forever. I give thanks to God for things I haven't seen. Amen. And you should do. I give thanks to God for prayers that hasn't been answered, but you should too. I give thanks to God for what I know is going to happen down the road because I don't know what's down the road, but the one thing I do know that God is with me, God is for me, and God is good. So I say, Lord, I thank you. I thank God for protecting these children of mine. I got four children. I have nine grandchildren and one great-grandson. I thank God for protecting them. I got on road, we got pretty close to 4,000 members on this church. They don't show up on Sunday morning, but I grant you if they, had a, if they died, I'm a member of St. Peter's. We've had people to die, and they say they were members. I said, I don't know them. If I don't know you, <laughs> Rob, trust me, if I don't know them, I probably could call the name of probably 85% of these people in this church. Because if I set out, I get the one thing I do when I meet somebody, I set out to get to know them. That is my goal. And I ask people, what's this guy's name? What's their name? And I'm not satisfied until I get it down into my reservoir. And once I get it down in my computer, trust me, Bubba, you can come back 20 years from now. I look you in the face and I probably call your name. I worked with names and numbers all my life. I could give you, I've been out on the military prairie. I got discharged in 65, I don't know how many years. I can give you my MA number, all of those. I know those things. It don't get away from my wife, I tell you that. Once I get something in my spirit, it's there. And see, this, one of the reasons, because I don't take you for granted. I grant you, you missed three services, I know you had a service. 
can almost look over this church and by know who's not there. Now, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going I'm to let a secret out. You, have, you live by pattern. You almost sit in the same seat every Sunday. I can tell you, right, I know where Thomas sat. I know for, for Sheila, Felicia, Larry. I know where you sat. I know when Paul was not here because he and Catherine's name is on that seat. Oh, God is good, isn't he? So, notice there in verse number 22, and let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with what? We should be so excited. The minute that strike that organ, you ought to be down here dancing. If you don't do anything, you dance that devil off of your shoulders. Dancing of the good future because you know God is setting you up for something great. Like my grandsons, they came up here. They're destined for greatness. If they don't get foolish, and I know they won't get foolish because I'm going to go at them. You got to walk in this word. You got to walk this thing out. And God has set you up for something great because he said, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has the end of the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. Let's walk this thing out and rejoice. Tell your neighbor, walk this thing out and rejoice. Because where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. I repeat, what you're going through right now is not compared to what you're going to receive tomorrow. I know that I'm destined for greatness. Every day of my life, every year, every moment, something great is going to happen. I start my day out giving praises to God because I know something good is going to happen because God is good. Tell your neighbor, God is good. When I think about the goodness of God, God is good. God is great. So therefore, I'm going to walk right into it. Say, I'm going to walk right into it. Yes, 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 I'm going to walk right into what God had for me. You know how good God is to me? This morning I walked out here and I just prayed a prayer. I just said, now God's so good to me. I say, God, let your spirit be present in here. Let the people feel you. Sheila was leading the song then. And she hit a note and I ain't never known Sheila to step out there and hear it. I said, go on, Sheila. Go on, Holy Ghost. She had a long dress on. You know who she looked like? Catherine Kuhlman. So you know what? I believe she was hearing from the Holy Ghost because I saw people running to the altar. Man, she was out there. I said, go on, Sheila. That's the Holy Ghost. I know when the Holy Ghost is moving. I just prayed that prayer that fast and God started. Look at God. God. Sheila in her long dress. Charles stepped out there to help her because he didn't want her to trip. I ain't never known Sheila wear a dress that long. I will see. But it was God. It was God. You saw the response. That fast I prayed and God moved. When I pray for you, I expect something to happen. When I pray, I pray in the Holy Ghost. I expect something to happen. Tell your neighbor, when I pray, I expect something to happen. When I pray, I expect something to happen. That's the way it goes, Thurman. When I pray, something happens. Tell your neighbor, when I pray, something happens. When I pray, something happens. When I pray, something happens. I'm just not throwing something out there. No, I try to have a relationship with God. And when I talk, God is talking. When I speak, God is speaking. When I move, God is moving. Notice what the Bible stated in Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, he said, now they're walking this thing out. Put some legs on the word. Tell your neighbor, put some legs on that word. When you're walking, God is walking. 
I repeat, when you walk in God is walking. He said, now that you have received Christ the Lord, he said, now walk it out. Walk ye in him. What? Acts 17, 28. In him we live. In him we move. And in him, we're complete in him. Colossians 3, 10. We are complete in him. Notice what he said in verse 7. You got to get rooted and build up in him. Not in you, but in him. You got to get your life established in him. Establish in the faith as you have been taught. Didn't notice what he said? Abound in therein with thanksgiving. You know what the word abound means? To overflow in abundance. We don't say thanks enough, Caesar, to one another. We take one another for granted. But here the Bible says you get saved, we are to abound. There in with thanksgiving, giving thanks and praises unto his name, blessing one another, encouraging one another. Thank you, Arthur, for looking after the bishop. Thank you, Arthur, for, for the position you take in the church. Thank you, Effie, for what you do. Thank you, Silas. Thank you, Cecil. Thank you, Robert. When you see somebody doing something good in the church, walk over and tell them, I appreciate what you do in our church. I appreciate how you minister in this church. I appreciate what you're doing. Don't take it for granted that he's got to do it. Learn to give thanks to one another. On the person you should not be giving thanks to is the person that's sitting down not doing anything. This is a great church. Because we got people here doing things to make it great. Amen. Wonder what it will be like if everybody put their hand to the plow. Wonder what it would be like if everybody put their hand to plow, to the plow. Make it a habit of thanking one another. Thank you for the role you play in this church. Thank you for making this a great church. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for helping Bishop and Lady George build God's house. Let's don't take one another for granted. Let's saturate this house with a spirit of thanksgiving, with a spirit of praise. Quit criticizing. Paul told the church of Philippians, Philippians 1, 14, he said, do all things without murmuring and complaining. We complain too much. We murmur too much. And most of the people that are murmuring and complaining is not doing anything. Stop and give thanks. I heard, I was reading, I'm, I love to read. I was reading an article the other day. I'm trying to think who was by. Oh, David Jeremiah. I was cleaning my basement by commands of my wife. <laughs> and I just turned the radio on. I follow her commands. And if you're a husband and you don't follow your wife's commands, you ain't got much of a marriage. Come on now, brothers. My dad taught me something. Every good husband got a little hen in him. Got a little hen in him. I mean, you gotta be a little hen pig to get along with your wife. Cause women give out commands. Robert, you know it's the truth. You want to say anything, but I know Therese. <laughs> Later, George's going to throw me in the jail for this one. But it's true. I'm going to tell you a couple. Every now and then I say no so I won't lose my manhood. I'm not going to be a hen all of my life now. I'll show a little hen to make, have peace. But I'm still the head of the house. Let every man say. <laughs> Let me get in there. I'm going to have to go spend the night with you, Brother Silas, <laughs> so I can have peace in the valley. 
Hey, baby. <laughs> but this is what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. He said, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We don't give thanks to God for the nakedness that's going on in our life, but in the midst of every circumstance, in the midst of every trial, I give thanks to God that there's no weapon that's formed against me will prosper, and every tongue that rises against me in judgment is condemned. I give thanks and praise to God in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the circumstances. If God is for me, for greater is he that is in me and he that is in the world. I know in due season God would turn this trial, he would turn the second round to my good. Because he said, all things work out to together for the good, for them that love God and who are called. So while you're going through that trial, give thanks to God that you're going to come through. While you're going through the circumstances or whatever it is, he said, when it comes to you, he said, give thanks to God. It's only for a season, and when you come through, you're going to come out looking good. Tell your neighbor there's something good on the other side of that trial. There's a blessing on the other side of that trial because that trial will make you a better man. It'll make you a better woman, and you'll be a stronger Christian, and when you come out of it, you'll be qualified to go to the next level. Help us, God. Help us, God. Now, let's close it out. Four areas you should thank God for every day. Four areas in your life you should give thanks to God every day. Four areas every day. Say every day. Every. I'm going to go through the fact. The first one, spiritual blessing. Always giving thanks to God. What God did for us in Christ Jesus, he redeemed us. Thank God for forgiving us of our sin, our trespasses, and our iniquities. He's no longer Lord over me for my past mistakes. And I thank God for our church. Got a great church here. We got great leaders here. We have great people here. A vision that is second to none. Everybody has to get involved. And I thank God to have a, you ought to thank God. Instead of murmuring and complaining, you ought to thank God that you got a good pastor. Since you won't, I'll do it myself. Rob, come here, Arthur. Tap me on the back. I can't reach back there. Thank you, Bishop. Have a seat. You know, I like to hear it too. Tell your wife, say, I like to hear it too. Husband, tell your wife, I like to hear it too. Everybody wants to hear some gratitude. Thank you for the sacrifices that you make. Don't never take me or one another for granted. That inspires a person to do more when you're grateful. They want to do more when you have a grateful heart. Number two, material blessings. We have a warm home to live in. We have one clothes to wear. Definitely we're not hungry. Not in America. Ain't nobody going to hunger right here. You can just hang on the block and say, I'm hungry. Somebody give you a dollar. <laughs> Number three, you should be giving thanks, God, for your physical blessings, your health, your body, your life. You're able to get around. Your movability. Don't take life for granted. There's a lot of people who can't get around. They're locked in a wheelchair. And you have all of these things going for you, and you don't stop and give thanks to God. Some people can't see, but you can see. Thank you for your eyes. Ears, thank you, God, for just giving me a healthy body. And by all means, number four, external blessings. Your parents. Siblings, your friends, people who love you. Don't take them for granted. Don't focus on the bad, focus on the good. Jobs to provide for you. God gave you a good job. 
And he have better things for you if you learn to be grateful. Good church with a good pastor. You know, that's Mother Abbott right there. Mother Abbott, Mother Hash, Mother Speaks, all of our mother seniors stand up. All of our seniors stand up, the senior if you can. Brother Gray, you're a senior. George, I think you're over 60. Don't tell nobody. I ain't going to tell nobody you're over 60, but I believe we can guess. If you're over 60, stand up. The Bible calls these people the pillars of the church. They are the pillars of the church. I'm going to go a little further if you're over 55. You're older than you. You know what young but 55 in the book. They're pillars. These are the pillars of the church. You don't want to throw them away. No. Mix the two together, the millennials with these seniors, and we will have a great church. Thank God for our seniors. Come on, give them a praise. We thank him for their stickability. They hung in there. There's a lot of people started with us, but they fell by the wayside. The devil pulled them away from the flock. It wasn't God. Most of them. But they chose to leave, so bye-bye. But you stayed. You hung it out. God got to find somebody that has some stickability. How can you build a house if people's always running? Now you have to have some stickability. Hang in there. Everything can always be rosy, but you got to have some stickability. Are you hanging there for the good, bad, and ugly? Lady Joyce and I have been married 53 years. It hasn't all been good. You can have a seat. I'll talk about Lady Joyce for a minute. You know what I said, Lady Joyce? I'm the pastor. I ain't never did nothing wrong. <laughs> now, I can't tell a lie in the pulpit, can I? <laughs> but we've been married 53 years. It ain't all been good. It's been through the good, bad, and ugly. But the one thing we can say, we're celebrating 53 years because we hung in there and we put up with one another. And to be honest with you, if I left Lady George and got somebody else, I probably would get somebody the worst. And the same thing is true with her. If she left me and got somebody else, of course, she can't find nobody better than me, though. <laughs> got that right? Come on, Lady George. Come on, tell the truth, Lady George. There were times in these 53 years we thought we were going to kill one another. But we hung in there. We went to another room, closed our doors, let the heat build, go down, and we came out and we forgave one another. We're still hanging in there. Now we're in it for good. The one thing, well, I better not go down that road. She looked at me and said, don't you say that. <laughs> but it's good. You can have fun while you're mad at one another. I'll just leave it there. Well, you may ask me the question, what is the right time or the perfect time to give thanks to God and to one another? Every day, every moment, every hour is the right time now. Start it right now. Not wait till she changed. No, you change first and she probably will change. Too long, we want someone else to change. No, you change first, and that person that's on the other side probably will change. Let me close this out right quickly. Y'all looking at me like, he's crazy up there. I'm not crazy. I'm just bold enough to tell the truth. Now, notice that two symptoms of an ungrateful heart. Number one, giving God credit after you took the credit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he said, I am what I am because of the grace of God. It's the grace of God that got me and you and us to where we are. So before we ever take any credit, I always give him the glory, the praise, and the honor because he got us to where we are. 
I learned this early in my life. Every time God would do something great in my life, the first thing I am to do is fall on my knees. I'll give thanks and praises to God for it because I know it was God working in me and through me that brought us to where we are. Now, people would come and praise you and throw oil in your face as long as you don't forget. God did it. And we praise God first. God made it possible. And number two, being dishonest about your past state. That's why I don't mind telling you that I was a devil before I got saved. And you were too. Don't look at me like that. And everybody here was. Because we were all sinners and sinners sin. Tell your neighbor, sinners sin. And when I look back over my life and think about Kevin, how good God is and what he brought me from, I'll tell you something else. When I go back to my hometown and see all my buddies, most of them, all of them dead now, though, well, a few of them still hanging around. Man, I say, thank God he got me out of this place. Oh, boy, they look like death eating crackers. Oh, boy, they look, oh. All of them got gray hair. They haven't learned my secret. God is good. Tell your neighbor, God is good. Every now and then, later, George will look at my head and say, you need me to work on your head. So I go get me some dye. I come out here like I'm 10 years old. That's what a good wife would do. I can tell you, a good woman will make her man look good. A good woman can take old rusty man and make him look good. Yeah, a good woman can take an old rusty, ugly-looking man and clean him up and make him look good. I can tell you a few, but I won't call no names. Yeah, I can tell you a few, but I won't call no names. And a wise man, listen to me, a wise man will do the same thing for his wife. And let me say this, ladies, you don't dress to please the world, you dress to please your husband. If he don't like it, change. I tell Lady George, I don't like that baby. That ain't you. You know what she do? She take it off. <laughs> and she come out and she puts her dance over. How you like this, JC? I said, go on, girl, with your bad self. And you know what I do, Nathan? Come here. I say. Go on with your bad self. Go there. That's my stuff. I can hit it. Yeah, that's my stuff. I can hit it. Tell your neighbor, that's my stuff. I can hit it. You better believe I can. And I ain't afraid to, neither. And she like it. She... And every now and then she'll start twisting and she'll look back over her shoulder. Are you looking? <laughs> I'm grateful to God to have a wife like that. And let me close it out. Four benefits <laughs> of a thankful heart. Number one, it gives expression to life. You'll never have a grateful marriage, grateful life, if you don't learn how to stop and give thanks. It's a way of life when you have a grateful heart for your companion, for the person or the people that is in your life. They want to give to you. They won't stop giving to you. They'll find ways to be a blessing to you when they see that you are grateful. Number two, it keeps you aware of the blessings in the spirit arena. All of my blessings come from the Lord. All of my blessings come from the Lord. Not what I did, it's what the Lord did on my behalf. I'm forever grateful. I look to God for everything, in everything, because it said, in all of their ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. And number three, 
It motivates you to be a giver. You become like God because you're learning that brings the best out of a wife when you're constantly giving praise and giving thanks. It brings the best out of a companion when you're always on the other end giving thanks and giving praise for what difference they make in your life. And by all means, it opens up God's heart and hand to people who are grateful. And number four, by doing this, it chases away despair, discouragement, discontentment, and dissatisfaction. Your focus is God and his goodness, not how bad the situation is. Amen. The reason you're having despair, discouragement, discontentment, and dissatisfaction, you lost your focus. And your focus became on people and not God. Amen. What they said, what they did doing, or what they didn't do. Don't let someone else's action, words, and attitude interfere with your happiness, Amen. your joy. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices of praise, sacrifices of giving things. They may not deserve it for the moment, but you can change anyone with a grateful heart. Psalms 100 verse 4, David said, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And he said, Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Oh, I love this, I love this, I love this. Then he says in 2 Corinthians 4, 15, for all things are for your sake, God, that the abundance of grace might through the thanksgiving of men and redeem to the glory of God. Guys, we've got to bring this back to our lives, to our families, to our relationship with one another. There can be no hostility or strife where there is true thanksgiving and an attitude of gratefulness to God and to one another. That removes the spirit of strife and division out of the home when we are grateful and always giving thanks. And sometimes people may not have married it, but there were a lot of times we didn't, but God forgave us anyway. And we learned to be quick to forgive. And one good way to have a pleasant home is practice giving thanks and giving praise unto the Lord. And our love for God increases as we continue to thank God and glorify him with pure thankfulness and gratitude. And see, the good thing about it, you do it without any ulterior motive. I don't want to thank God. I just want to thank you. I don't want nothing. I just want to thank you. You've been good to me. I'm not coming begging. I'm coming giving thanks. You approach his throne. Not that's good. There are times you just approach God and just spend 15, 20 minutes just thanking God. God, I don't want anything. Every time I go to God, I don't go to just for a want. I just want to go to God and say, God, I want to express my gratitude. I want to express my feeling. I want to express my love for you. I do the same thing with Lady Joyce. And she does to me like that. Every now and then we just stop. And we express our love and our devotion to one another. I believe it builds a stronger bond. Do it with your parents. Do it with your siblings. Practice giving thanks. Practice on one another. You will sharpen your relationship. You will have a pleasant life. And by all means, you'll drive the devil out of your environment. That's all I have for you today. It's good to give thanks. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to magnify you with thanksgiving. Look at your neighbor. Say, I will magnify God and you with thanksgiving. I didn't mean to preach that long. I thought I was going to get some testimonies, but it's almost too late now. But God is good. God is good. Just for a few minutes while the praise team is coming, let's give thanks to God. Father, we just want to take this time this morning to give thanks and praises to your name. You're a good God. You're such a great God. You're a wonderful God. We love you. And we're forever grateful. From the fruit of your lips, express your gratitude to God. Let's don't take God for granted. Let's always give him things.